I'm Professor Robert Doyle in the Department of Chemistry here at Syracuse University. So my research is very much focusing on utilizing the vitamin B12 dietary uptake pathway um, for drug development. So we're very much interested in exploiting a natural pathway to benefit um, humans through drug development. Right now, one of the holy grails of pharmaceutical uh, development is, is oral peptide delivery. So normally, if you take an oral medication, it's a small molecule that's quite stable to the stomach acid or the um, degrading uh, enzymes, for example, in your intestinal uh, tract. But peptides being proteins or proteins um, that are being formed as drugs or used as drugs will be degraded. And so they typically have to be injected. Insulin is a classic example. It's typically injected, of course. And the reason you don't take an insulin pill is because your stomach and your intestine would degrade it. And so vitamin B12, which is a small molecule, it actually happens to be sensitive to acid hydrolysis, for example. And because you can't live without it, your body's had to evolve a mechanism to recognize it, bind it, protect it through your gastrointestinal system, then carry it across into your bloodstream and then let it go. Um, and so what we're trying to do is use that same system that's protecting B12 and delivering it um, to deliver peptides by essentially hiding the peptide in the pathway and then letting the pathway do what it normally does. And then once it gets to the side you want it to be on, which is the systemic circulation, you want it to be able to allow the peptide to work. So there's a million reasons why this won't work. It's very complicated and, um, and we don't even fully understand the B12 pathway itself. Um, but that's, that's what we're really interested in. And the big picture is a greater understanding of a very important pathway to us biologically and potentially a new route to, um, to orally administer a whole new class of drugs, which would obviously be really, really awesome. Uh, patients often consider themselves to be sicker if they're told they have to administer a, a needle as opposed to take a pill. And, and let's face it, you eat. Normally the way things go into your body is through the mouth. So as a consequence, taking a pill is, is not a major issue. It's, it's a simple, facile thing to do. Get up in the morning, you take your pill. You go to bed, you take your pill. Uh, injections becomes, it's a whole rigmarole. It's a whole dance. We're really interested in diabetes because it fits within that paradigm. It fits within my desire to understand the vitamin B12 pathway and whether it can be exploited to deliver pharmaceuticals or improve upon existing pharmaceuticals. So looked at in that way, there are only certain medications that are going to, I believe, work in tandem with the B12 pathway. One of them, or several of them, include peptide hormones that are currently FDA approved that happen to treat diabetes. The, we recently just had a paper accepted in the journal Endocrinology, um, which has been the mainstay of hormone research for, for really 100 years to the Endocrine Society. And, and the paper itself essentially describes an effect we were not expecting. So we were doing control experiments prior to the oral delivery. So what we needed to do was modify the peptide, trying to do the things I was telling you about, trying to make the peptide work better than it normally does. And so before we gave it orally, um, we wanted to know whether it still worked if we gave it um, subcutaneously, so straight, you know, needles, straight into the system without having to go through the gauntlet of the gastrointestinal system. Because if we gave it orally and it didn't work, we wouldn't know if it was because it didn't work or it got destroyed. So we had to bypass the gastrointestinal system and just show that it worked, or worked okay. And it turned out it worked better. So actually this result was born of us just doing controlled experiments, which is obviously a testament for why you should do controlled experiments. Um, and actually what happened was we made it better, which we were not anticipating in any way, shape or form. So we've got a lot of great data there that, that will now be a really exciting push for funding. Um, and also will be the cornerstone now of the oral studies, where we'll now translate this into oral administration and we'll see if we can actually now produce the same effect, but given it as a in tablet form, as opposed to you need to subcutaneously inject. And that would be a real milestone in any area of pharmacology. That would be an enormous breakthrough.